everyone welcome to edimon tutorials i'm riya pami in this lecture we're going to learn about propositional equivalences so let's learn the first definition under it that is a compound proposition that is always true no matter what the truth values of the propositional variables that occur in it is called a tautology which means that a compound proposition produces truth values that produces truth values no matter what propositional va variables are involved in it is called as a tautology and a compound proposition that is always false is called as a contradiction a compound proposition that is neither a tautology nor a contradiction is called as contingency let's see an example here in this case we can observe in this compound proposition that it has produced truth values so we can call this as a tautology this compound proposition we call this as a tautology and this has produced the false values therefore this is called as the contradiction let's learn about logical equivalences in the last lecture actually we have seen about equivalences briefly in short so when do we call compound propositions are equivalent to each other when the truth values under them like the, uh, like here for example this compound proposition produces this values and as well as this compound proposition that is not p and not q not q has produced these values so when the truth values under these two compound propositions are same then we can call that not a negation whole of p or q is equivalent to not p and not q so like every time we can't derive truth values out of it right we need some formulas sometimes for some complex problems it will be really difficult to derive truth values of each and every propositional statement under it so therefore we we have to by heart all these formulas that is the logical equivalences this like this laws and also these are the logical equivalences involving conditional statements and these are the logical equivalences involving biconditional statements so when you by heart all these laws it will be really simple to solve a complex problem with applying these rules let's see an example show that negation if p negation whole of if p then q and p and not q are logically equivalent so if you normally if you don't apply these laws we have to derive a whole set of we have to divide like first we have to find p uh, we less than values for p and q then we'll find p if p then q then we'll apply the neg whole negation of it in the same way we'll first find the not q values then we have to perform the conjunction to it that is p and not q for it so it will take a lot of time so when you are applying these laws see how it makes it simple so negation whole of not p or q so when there is a whole negation applied to this set we often use de morgan's law so by using the second de morgan law that is, which is this we can say that not p and not q so in this case it is or so it has become end by applying de morgan's law that is not of not p and not q so there there is a double negation here observe so when there is a double uh, negation here you should immediately apply double negation law which is this not of not p is equivalent to p which is the double negation law so therefore p and not q these are equivalent to in each other so see we can uh, solve this problem in just three steps by using two laws but if you are doing a uh, deriving truth tables you have to take a lot of time let's learn about propositional satisfiability when do you call a propositional statement that is satisfiable is let's see that a propositional statement that is satisfiable we can call it satisfiable if and only if its truth table is not a contradiction the truth table is not a contradiction it can be a tautology it can be a contingency but it should not be a contradiction so not contradiction means it could be a tautology also like every tautology is also satisfiable but satisfiability doesn't imply tautology that's we can't imply that satisfiability is what is called as a tautology no it can be contingency it can be tautology but it should not be a contradiction so with this i conclude this lecture in the coming up lecture we're going to look into even more interesting topics for all of that and more i'll see you in the next lecture